All right. Um, okay, are we good here? Implicit differentiation. All right, that's it for this section. Now we're moving into one of the applications, one, one application of partial derivatives, not all applications, but a pretty convenient one. And we talked about this last class, that um, the partial derivative is going to allow us to find the tangent plane. Remember we were talking about the plane that would be on the surface last time? This, this uh, formula that I'm presenting to you here basically just wraps all that concept up into one nice little package. So let's see what this says. Finding a, t a tangent plane to a surface. If you have a surface, right, you've got this z, uh, z is some function of x and y, so you've got the surface floating out here, right? You've got our ground down here. If we go to some point, okay, x naught, y naught, plug that in up here, we should get some point. And we should be able to find a plane that is tangent to our surface there, right? Well, what do you need to define a plane? A point n, normal a normal vector. That's all you need, right? Because the, the good old fashioned um, equation of a plane is this. Right? This is what we studied or talked about. This is this has appeared on several of your mini exams and throughout your homework, right? That's the equation, generic equation of a plane, where x naught, y naught, z naught is just a point on the plane, right? And then the normal vector for that plane is ABC. Those are just the numbers in front of these parentheses. Well, look at what this tells us. If you have any surface, then this is the equation of the plane. So let's see, do you all see here that um, that is that, right? That is that, and that is that, and then of course equals zero, right? And that means that the A, the B, the C is this, this, and that. So this is telling you that in order to get the A, the number in front of that first parenthesis, what you're going to do is you're going to take the partial derivative of this with respect to x, and then you're going to plug in the point that you're at. And that's going to feed you a number, and that number is A. And then you take the partial of that with respect to y, plug the point in, and that's going to give you your B. And then for this particular scenario where z is a function of, of x and y, your C will always be negative 1. Always. So your normal vector can be defined as follows then. Right? This is your A, B, C, A, B, C. Now we have taken partial derivatives in here, right? We've already done that. But what we have not done is actually plugged a point into it or plugged values in, which isn't any harder. We just haven't done it yet. So let's do an example. <clears throat> So I have this surface, right? This function of two variables, f of xy equals 1 half xy. Let's take a look at the graph of this thing. That's the graph of that surface. We call this a saddle or saddle point right there in the middle. We'll talk about that later. Okay, we got this surface. And what I'd like for us to do is to find the equation of the plane that's tangent to that surface at the point 1, 2, 1. So let's go to the point 1, 2, 1. So there we are. That's the point right there on the surface that we're talking about. And I'd like for us to find the equation of, oop, of that plane. Whoa, what the hell? Everything got flipped over. There we go. I would like for us to find the equation of that plane right there, the green plane that is tangent to the surface of that point. That make sense? OK. So to do it, for this function is actually not that hard, all right? As long as we can take some partial derivatives, we're in business. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and try and first, let's, let's start with the equation. The equation 
of the plane, right, is going to be um, the partial of f with respect to x at the point 1, 2 times x minus 1 plus the partial of f with respect to y at the point 1, 2 times y minus 2 uh, minus 1 and then z minus 1 equals 0. All right, so do you all understand what the, where all that I came from? That's the formula right there. Let me move it down right there. Okay, that's that formula right there. So this first piece right here, right there, that's saying, hey, you've got to take the partial derivative with respect to x and then plug in the x and y coordinate of the point you're talking about. And then you do x minus x naught. Remember, my point here was the point 1, 1, 2, 1, right? That was the point. So I use the formula x minus x naught, x minus 1, plus now I take the partial with respect to y and then plug in the x and the y value, 1 and 2. Put that number in front of y minus y naught. Here's our 2. And then negative 1 will always be there. And then z minus z naught. Any questions on what I'm, like, where that is coming from? All right, so we need some partials, don't we? We need some partials. Let's do some partials over here. What's the partial with respect to x? What is it? One half y. Is that what you say? Yep. One half y. Everyone got that? Just treat, treat like, y like a constant. The half is a constant, so those two are constants. Derivative of x is 1. So you just get 1 half y. Partial of y, partial of f with respect to y is the opposite, right? It's 1 half x. You're treating x like a constant and treating y like your variable. We good? So this piece here means we have to take this function right here and for x plug in 1 and for y plug in 2. Right? But there are no x's in here. So I'm just going to plug what into this? 2. two. So if I plug that, I'm going I'm to just write down, I'm going to do 1 half times 2. And then that's in front of x minus 1. Then plus, now I need to do this one, which is this right here, plugging in x equals 1 here. So that will give me a half times 1, and then y minus 2. And then this will always be minus 1, and then z minus 1 equals 0. We're almost there. 1 in front of x minus 1 plus a half in front of y minus 2 minus 1 in front of z minus 1 equals 0. That is the equation of the plane. I could multiply those constants through the parentheses, but that, that's good enough. I like this version um, because you can easily see what the point is, right? And you can easily see the normal vector from this. Any questions here? Yes? I didn't copy down before, but the normal vector is just the same way as we find the normal vector on the other planes prior to this class. Wait, say again? <clears throat> the way we find the normal vector this way is just the same as before, I'm saying. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, normal vector is the same. This, this, that. That's your normal vector. So if, if you wrote the, you know, n equals the vector 1, 1 half, negative 1, that would be the normal, well, that would be a normal vector of the plane. Any scalar multiple of that would work as well. All right. I have another example. But it's a, it's, a, it's a little more complicated function. So look at, the, look at the z equals f of x, y. Same exact principle that we just had. The thing that's going to be more difficult here is the derivatives, right? So I think I'm going to start with the partials on this. Instead of writing the equation of the plane first, 
Let me start with the partial because I know that I need them. So first the partial with respect to x. All right, so ooh, arctan. That's a chain rule problem, right? I have to, I need to get to the inside of this, but I have to start on the outside. So I have to take derivative of arctangent of something. And nothing has changed. Derivative of arctangent is still the same as what it's always been. So here we go. It's 1 over 1 plus, what's true? Arctan is the same as tangent inverse, right? Derivative of tangent inverse is 1 over 1 plus x squared, right? So I'm going to do 1 over 1 plus whatever the argument in here is squared. Do I need to write the, the formula for arctan derivative down or no? Do you all remember that? It's been a while. Okay. So that's derivative of arctan, right? Is 1 over 1 plus u squared, whatever u is. And then chain rule, I'm not done, times, now you can take the derivative of what's inside. And when I go to take derivative of what's inside, do I need, do I need product rule? I heard yes and no. Do I need the product rule right there? No. Why not? Why is a constant, right? So you can just ignore it, take the derivative of x, which is 1, and then multiply by your constant. So all you have here is what? y squared. Now, if you did the the product rule, you'd actually get the right answer, as long as you remember that the derivative of a constant is zero. When you get to that part, it would go away. Like, let, let me do it right here. If I forgot, then if I did the product rule on here, right, then the first thing I would do is take derivative of x, which is 1, times y squared, then plus, now you take derivative of y squared, but y is a constant, right? So that would give you zero, and then times x, and the answer is still y squared. But you have to remember the derivative of y squared is zero. All right, so that's, that's my partial with respect to x. Let me write it this way. y squared over 1 plus, let's go ahead and square that, x squared y to the fourth. OK, that's my partial with respect to x. Now let's look at the partial with respect to y. Nothing changes on the first step. I still have to do the derivative of arctan first. The part that's different is that now x is a, x is a constant, right? So I have to take derivative of y squared, which is 2y and then hit it with the x. So 2xy. 2xy, 2yx. And putting that together, that's uh, 2xy on top of 1 plus x squared y to the fourth. All right, those are my two partials, right? Now, knowing, knowing what I need to do here to get my normal vector, I need to take this first one and plug in the x and the y, right? Plug in this for x and this for y into here, and that, that will give me a, right? To get b for my normal vector, I do this one and I plug in the x and the y. So I, I'm gonna write that, I'm gonna write that down over here. Well, you know what, I'll write the equation. I'm gonna take the partial with respect to x and evaluate it at one, one, and then I'm gonna do x minus one this is my equation of my plane. Plus, then I'm gonna take the partial with respect to y at one, one, and then do y minus one. And then I will always have minus one in front of z minus pi over four here in this case, equals zero. Any, any? Pardon? Let me answer it after. After we finish this problem, I'll, I'll address it. The question was, why is, that, why is the c in the normal vector, right? Why is the z component of it always negative 1, right? It seems like a natural question that we want to know, right? OK, we'll talk about that in a minute. All right. Um, What is this first number right here? We need to figure out what this first number is right there, right? So we need to plug 1, 1 into this. You get 1 half. And then you have x minus 1. And then you do plus. Now you have to plug 1, 1 into this one, which is 1 half again. Or no, is it? It's 1, because you have a 2 on top this time. So you get 1 
and then y minus 1, and then negative 1, and then z minus pi over 4 equals 0. Okay. So there's a question about why this is always negative 1. I, I will be able to answer that question, but not yet. I should be able to get to it today, but not, I, need to, I need to set something up first. And then I can, because right now, like what do you think, if you follow the pattern here, this first one is the partial of f with respect to x, right? The second one is the partial of f with respect to y. What do you like kind of want to believe this is? Partial of f with respect to z, right? But we haven't even talked about that because our f function depends on only two variables, right? x and y. So it made sense to talk about partial with respect to x, partial with respect to y, but does it make any sense to talk about the partial with respect to z? It, it will after I just need to set a little bit up and then we can do it, all right? And then you'll see it's always negative one. All right, um, that's it. That's it for this section. I think these problems in the homework are pretty straightforward because you just, you just use the formula, right? So the challenge is really gonna be, are you getting your partial derivatives correct, right? Are you actually doing your partials correctly and then plugging in the points properly? Short and sweet on that one. All right. Next section, chain rule. So we all know the chain rule in Cal 1, right? And we really, you couldn't get here without understanding chain rule, right? Like it's probably one of the most important rules in Cal 1. Like if you never learn chain rule, you never get through Cal 1. And you definitely don't survive Cal 2, right, without chain rule. So we know this is an important rule. Now what we have are these new functions that have more than one variable in them, x and y. And so it makes sense to want to talk about, like, how does chain rule work here? And I know it looks like we've already been doing chain rule, but, but we're talking about something a little bit different, a little, something a little more abstract. So let's talk about Cal 1. In Cal 1, we would say y is some function of x, right? y equals x squared, y equals sine x, y equals whatever, right? But the variable y depended on the variable x. So the y above here and the x down here means that this x feeds in here and you get the value of y, right? Whenever we have a variable that depends on another variable and only one variable, right? y depends only on x. I'm gonna put just a specific example here, okay? Here, if you give me x, I give you y, right? When we have this scenario, then we can take the derivative of y with respect to x, and that's our traditional Cal 1 derivative. Then what we do, we don't need to, take, we don't need to do this, do we? No. 2x plus 6, no. goodbye, we're done, okay. Now, the chain rule in Cal 1 so I'm gonna give you a specific example before I do it. In Cal 1, if you were given y equals, let's say, sine of x squared plus one, and you were asked to find dy dx, right? We all know what, how to do this, right? We all know how to do this. But what we could do, what we could do is realize that this right here is some other function that's being plugged into the sine function. So you could break this down into to two different things like this. You could say y is let's say sine of t and then t is x squared plus one. Right? And then you can use this this differentiation where you take derivative of y here with respect to t, because that's the variable t, that would give you cosine t. 
And then here you take the derivative with t of t with respect to x, which would give you 2x. Right? And then what you do is you multiply these two together. If you multiply those two together, dy dt times dt dx, that would be cosine t times 2x, right? That's what would happen if I multiply those two together. And if I rewrite this, replacing t with, what was t? x squared plus 1. Isn't that the answer we would have gotten doing chain rule? Yes. Yes? That's the, that's the, that's basically what we, we can now do that like mentally, right? We don't need to do something like this. Um, and if you cancel the dt's, you see that this is dy dx, right? So this, this idea here, what I want you to see is that here, by rewriting it like this, our y depended on t, right? Our y depended on t, and then our t depended on x, right? And so, whoa, I didn't realize I was still in that meeting. Oops. Okay, so when we look at this straight line connecting these together, from here to here, that's dy dt. Okay, we can take a derivative between those two variables. And then between these two variables, I can go dt dx. And if we take these two and multiply them, that's the derivative of y with respect to x. Right, that was these two, are the two pieces right here. Do you all see that? All right, now this is going to start to make more sense as I continue here. So if you're a little like, I'm not sure where he's going with this, just, just hang tight. What if we have a surface where we have z Right? Z is some function of Z is some function of X and Y. Then we could write this diagram. The Z depends on X and it depends on Y, right? So it depends on two things. Down each of these branches, okay, each of these branches of this tree diagram that I'm making here, we have a derivative. Down the first branch, I have a partial of z with respect to x. The reason I'm using a partial here is because there's another variable over here that I had to hold constant for me to take this derivative. Over here, we have dz, uh, partial of z with respect to y, and again, they're partials because I had another variable that z depended on that I had to hold constant. If you look back at the other diagrams we had, come on, like this, right here, you notice there's no branches, right? As long as there's no branches out, then these are going to be your traditional straight up derivatives. Derivative, derivative, right? It's when you branch that you would have to have a partial. So, okay. If z equals x sine xy, find those partials. So I'm going to draw I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to draw the tree real quick even though we don't need it. It's just it's another way of looking at what we've already done. Do you all agree from this that I could say z depends on only two things, x and y? Yes? x and y. So if z only depends on x and y, then there are only two derivatives possible. There is the one down the left branch which is a partial of z with respect to x. And then the one down the right branch was the partial of z with respect to y. Those are the only two things that I could ask you for. And we know how to do these, right? If you do this one, you're going to hold y to be constant. You do this one, you're going to hold x to be constant. I'll do one of the two. Which one do you want me to do with respect to x or y? Y? OK. So partial of z with respect to y. All I do here, well, x is a constant, isn't it? So if x is a constant, I don't need a product rule here, do I? No, because it's a constant. So the x comes for the ride times. Now, sine of xy, 
the y is inside the sign, so I will have to use a chain rule on this part. Right? This constant comes, but now I need derivative of that. So it'll be cosine of x, y times, now I need to take derivative of what's in here. Do I have to do product rule? No, same thing, right? x is a constant, it'll come for the ride, and then derivative of y is 1. So we just get x in here, or x right there. So you get, you can bring this x out here in front with this x, you get x squared cosine xy. Partial derivative with respect to x is a lot spicier. Yeah, with respect to x you have a product rule, right? I think those are within, I mean, especially if you've done the homework for the other sections, which you haven't necessarily, but um, that'll be easy. We're building up to something here, okay? We're trying to generalize. So let's look at this now. Suppose I tell you that z is a function of x and y, okay? z depends on two things. But then I additionally tell you that the x that z depends on that x depends on t, some other function of t. And the y that z depends on also depends on t. Then what do we have? So here's our tree diagram for this. I'm going to let you look at that for a second. <clears throat> z depends on x and y, right? x depends on some variable t and y depends on some variable t. So ultimately, ultimately, what does z depend on? T. t. Do you all agree? z depends on one thing only here. This is not like the previous problem. Sorry, this is not like the previous case, I should say. Here, z depends on two things, right? z depends on two things. So there are only two possible derivatives, right? One for x and one for y. But if z depends on, on one thing here, right? It, z ultimately only, only depends on t. You give me t, I can give you x. You give me t, I can give you y. Once you know what y and x are, you get z, right? So z depends on t. That means the, there's only one derivative possible here. And that is the derivative of z with respect to t. Is it, a, is it a partial derivative? No. No? It's not. It depends directly on t, right? Yeah. And we said, like in, in Cal 1, if, x de if y depends on x, then from here to here, that's dy dx, right? So if you have something that depends on one thing only, then that's a regular traditional derivative. Here, z has to go through a bunch of crap, but eventually it just depends on t. So we have that z ultimately depends on dot, 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 depends on t. So we should be able to ask then, what's dz dt, right? If t changes a little bit, how does it change z? That's, we can ask that question, right? Yeah. How though, what is it though? Like what is, how do we calculate dz dt? Hold on. How do we calculate it, right? That's a natural question. What is it? Well, we use the tree, okay? So look. From here to here, those are partial derivatives because z depends on two things at this stage of the tree, right? But then you move from this tree branch down to t, x only depends on t, so that's a re regular derivative, right? See this branch? Chain rule says I should multiply these two together. But then we have another branch, which is this and this. I should multiply these two together Right, so we've got these two products from the two branches. What do you think we're going to do with those? Add them. And that, that is what you see here. dz dx, uh, sorry, that's a typo. What should it be? It should be dz dt. Right, because I said z ultimately depends on t, right? So dz dt, your traditional derivative should be equal to Partial z with respect to x, derivative of x with respect to t. That's the left branch, the product down the left branch, plus then you take the product down the right branch. Understand? 
We're gonna, there's gonna be more. You're gonna start to see how these branches, these things come together. There's your example. I'm gonna make it smaller. I think what I'm gonna do is write this stuff down on the side so I can use the full screen. Z is X sine of XY. And then x I'm telling you is t squared plus 1. And y I'm telling you is the natural log of t. You're being asked to find dz dt. Yes? So for this, are we going to actually find the partial and then multiply it by yep. the proper? Yep. Could we not also substitute in our values? Absolutely. And then just take the derivative? With respect to t, you could. But you would have to plug this in here, yeah. and that in there, and then you have product rules, and yes. It could get messy. It could, could get messy, but you could do it that way. All right, so here I go. I've got my, I've got my, if this were the problem, okay, let's just act like that was a problem given to me. This is the way I would do it. First thing I would is look at it. I would say, okay, Z depends on X and Y. The x I see here depends on t. The y depends on t, right? And then I would say, all right, let me talk about what derivatives I have in this tree. From here to here is a partial, because it splits off. This is partial z with respect to x. And then from here down to here, that's a direct straight derivative dx dt. Then over here, I do the same thing. This is a partial of z with respect to y, and then straight from here to here, that's dy dt. Does that make sense how I'm drawing that tree? Now I just have to remember the rule. The rule is, if you want this, whatever variable you're, th that you have here, dt, the rule is that I need to basically go down every branch that has t in it. So you see t's down here, right? I need to go down that branch and that branch, because they both have t's. And whatever branches I go down, I add those up. So my answer, dz dt, will be partial z with respect to x times derivative of x with respect, oop, with respect to t. That's this branch. Plus, then I do the right side, partial z with respect to y times dy dt. Now I just got to crank these things out. Equals. All right, let's focus our attention on that. Partial of z with respect to x. So that's the one I skipped. I didn't do that one. That's the previous example. We have to take derivative of that with respect to x, right? That with respect to x. That sucks, doesn't it? You'll see we have product rule there. Because the that's a variable, that's a variable. So we do have to do a product rule there. Uh, can I, can I just do it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing it in parentheses. Parentheses. All right, the derivative of the first function with respect to x is 